Hi, everybody. We're continuing on with our systems of equations unit. And I thought I'd share this with you because math is rarely about emotions or happiness or sad or love or anything like that. And I saw this on Facebook the other day and I thought, isn't this true? If you have a life with love, it makes us happy. What if we have a life without love? Yeah, that tends to make us sad. All kinds of love. Parents, brothers, sisters, girlfriends, boyfriends, friends. Now, I noticed that we have a positive love up here and a negative love down here. And it seems to me that everything we've learned in math means that opposites cancel each other out. So what are we left with? Well, now we have two lives. And that equals happy plus sad. Well, the rest of us really only have one life to live. So we need to get this down to one life. What should we do? Well, let's divide everything by two. Okay, if we divide everything by two, we have one life, and that equals half of us happy, half of us sad for half of our lives. I thought that that made sense because our life does continue to be half happy and half sad. Isn't that true? So let's apply this concept to some numbers, starting with a review. Up until now, we have given you a set of equations and we have asked you to take that set of equations and to graph them to find out if there is a solution, if there is a common point that they have. So let's take this first equation, x plus y equals 5, and let's try to graph it. Well, we know it's not in slope-intercept form, so I'd like you to review what you know about rewriting those. And please rewrite x plus y equals 5 in slope-intercept form. I'm going to pause the video here. If you did it correctly, you subtracted x from both sides. You found out y equals negative x plus 5. Okay, start with the 5 as a y-intercept, and you go down 1 to the right one, down 1 to the right one. Now let's take a look at the second equation. 3x minus y equals 7. Yes, I'm going to pause the video again. Please practice doing your rewrites. It's super important for next year in the high school. If you did it correctly, you subtracted 3x's from both sides. Then you noticed you were left with a negative y, and you divided every term there by negative 1 to end up with y equals 3x minus 7 starting at the negative 7 on the y-intercept, going up 3 to the right 1. When I graphed it, it looked a little bit like this. Now my graph looks a little bit different than yours, but you do notice there is one solution, and the solution is at 3, 2. This is all well and good, but sometimes it's so hard to graph to find the solution that maybe there's another way. Maybe what we can do is apply what we learned about the life and love equations to apply that to numbers. Now just keep in mind, I'm giving you the same two equations and our solution should be three comma two when we're done. These are the same two equations we had before, but I want you to notice something here. Do you see any opposites? We always look for opposites. I do, I see y and negative y. Those two will cancel each other out. And I'm left just adding everything together, adding all like terms. I have three x and x, that's gonna give me four x. Five plus seven is going to give me 12. So I'm left with a really simple one-step equation. And to solve this, I'm gonna divide both sides by four. That means x equals three. Is that true when we found our solution up here as 3 comma 2? Isn't the x value 3? It sure is. That sure seemed a lot easier. Now, we do have to figure out what the y is. The only thing we can do to figure out what y is is use our solution for x and substitute that into our original equation. Notice the x has been replaced with the 3 because I know that that's the value of x, and I added everything else in the way it was. When I'm done solving for y, y should equal 2, and we know that that is part of our solution. Now, I substituted it into the first equation. I'm going to use the second equation to check that my solution works. Remember, 3 is x, 2 is y, and I'm going to substitute those values into the second equation. Look at that. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. Yeah, works. The solution is 3, 2. 
this to me is just so much easier in certain situations. If you have opposites, the best thing to do is the elimination method. And that's what we call this. We call this the elimination method because we immediately eliminate one of the variables. Let's try this together. Do you see any opposites? I'm going to pause the video for you to answer that question. I do. I see x's are opposites. So I'm going to cancel those out and I'm left with 6y equals 12. Beautiful. Simple one step equation. Divide both sides by 6 and y equals 2. That's wonderful, but how am I going to find x? I'm going to change colors first of all. I always just take the first equation that I see or the easiest one and I'm going to write 2y minus x equals 5. We all know that our y value should be 2 so I'm going to substitute that in for y and I just have to solve this as a regular two-step equation. All right 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus x equals 5. Subtract both sides by 4. That's a 4. And now I have negative x equals 1. I can't have a negative x, and we know it's an invisible 1 in front of it. So if I divide both sides by negative 1, our x value should be negative 1. So therefore, it looks like our solution should be negative 1, comma, 2. But I never take that for granted. I always check it in the other equation to make sure that that's true. So let's take this second equation for y plus x equals 7. And I'm going to substitute the values I know. 4 times our y value. Our y value is 2 plus negative 1, and I'm writing a little too big here, equals 7. Now I just simplify. 4 times 2 is 8, plus a negative 1 really means minus 1, and I do know that 8 minus 1 is 7, and 7 equals 7, and that is our solution. Excellent work. How about this one? Again, I'm going to pause the video. Do you see any opposites? I do see opposites. I hope you do too. 3x and negative 3x will cancel right out. I love this. It makes things so simple. Now, what will I get when I cancel those out, when I combine like terms? What should I get? I'm going to pause the video for you to answer that. Yes, you should get 4y equals 8. Divide both sides by 4. Y equals 2. Again, now I need to find my x value. So we go back to the top and we rewrite our first equation or the easiest one, whichever applies. In this case, they both look the same. Oops, by the way, mistake already. This is 3x. Now I don't know what my x value is, so I keep it the same. But I do know my y value is 2. And I'm going to solve this just like we do two-step equations. That's why it was super important that you understand how to do that. I'm going to subtract 2 on each side. And I have 3x equals 4. Well, this is yucky. But sometimes it's okay. x is 4 thirds. So it looks like our solution that we have so far, we're going to check it, but it's 4 thirds comma 2. And I'm going to leave 4 thirds in what we call an improper fraction. It's not really improper. It's just that we're used to seeing it as a mixed number. I keep it as an improper fraction because improper fractions are easier to multiply. So I'm going to keep it that way. But now we have to check our second equation. I rewrite it. and I substitute my x and y in. I know x is 4 thirds. I know y 
is 2. This whole thing should give me 2 when I get done. Now, when I multiply negative 3 times 4 thirds, it's really kind of like negative 3 over 1. And I know that that would give me negative 12 over 3. Do you know how to simplify negative 12 over 3? I sure hope so. 3 goes into negative 12 negative 4 times. So that's what I get when I multiply through. Plus 3 times 2. Remember, I'm back here now. 3 times 2 is 6. And I should get 2. Well, let's just check. I have opposites, kind of like four bad guys jump into a fight with six good guys. There are more good guys than bad guys, so the good guys win the fight by two people, and two does equal two. Yes, we found the correct solution. I hope this makes sense. Good luck with your practice.